So just come standing, lifting and rolling your shoulders. Turn your head to the left and take an in and an out breath. Bring your head back to the centre and turn your head to the right, taking an in and an out breath. Bring your head back to the centre. Breathing in, raise your right arm upwards. Press your feet down. Breathing out, turn your head to the left, away from your right arm. Breathing in, bring your head back to centre. And breathing out, lower your right arm. Breathing in, raise your left arm. Stretch it up, press your feet into the ground. Breathing out, turn your head to the right, away from your arm. Breathe in, bring your head back to centre. And breathing out, lower your arm back down alongside you. Breathing in, raise both arms. Clasp and reverse them upwards. And breathing out, lower your arms back down alongside you. And then again, circling your arms up, clasping and reversing. And breathing out, lower your arms back down alongside you. This is one of the opening sequences uh, for um, uh, Tai Chi type sequence, breathing in, lowering, raising your arms up, class. But it, you'll also find it in the classic traditional vinyasa yoga opening as well, under the um, one of the Krishna Macharya traditions, breathing in, raising your arms up. Reverse. And breathing out lower, your arms back down alongside you. So taking, this is part of the Tai Chi sequence, taking a finger, I'm going to use my third finger. Just bring your fingers to the corners, the inside corners of your eyes, and angle the pads of your fingers slightly towards your, the bridge of your nose, just where uh, tears might come, and just, just press and circle there. Literally behind that duct is a little nick, and that is one of the energies for the, um, one of the really important opening of the energies up. And then release there and just bring the finger pads of your choice to the inside edge of your eyebrows and just circle a few times one way and then circle a few times the other way. Slide your fingers along your eyebrows halfway and there will be a little nick in the bone there and again just gently massage in one direction. If you're going to be very precise, it might be anti-clockwise, but just whatever naturally comes to you. And then circle the other way, which would be clockwise. And then just draw your pads of your fingers to your temples, the end of your eyebrows, uh, those little dents, uh, big dents, and circle in one direction, and circle in the other direction. Just drop your fingers directly underneath your um, pupils. There's a little nick there and just tap very, very gently. And then release your hands. Drop your chin to your chest. And like a pendulum or drawing a pencil from your chin to your chest up towards your right shoulder looking over your right shoulder. Reverse your pendulum, pendulum chin to chest and then just gently draw that semicircle up towards the left shoulder. 
and then once more each side. Chin to chest as you go to the right. Dropping and chin to chest as you go to the left. Chin to chest and just bring your head upwards. Lift and circle your shoulders forward a couple of times. And then lift and circle your shoulders backwards a couple of times. And then warming us up, just join in with me because I'm so not great at explaining this, but hands up, hands behind, cross and behind, hands up, behind, cross the other arm behind, up, down, cross, up, down, cross the other side, up, down, cross, so this works on many levels. Brain is one of them. Energy in the upper part of the body is another. Dispelling anger and frustration and irritation is another. You're stretching your chest under your arms. It's warming you up. So it has and tunes into many functions. And you're also going over your magnetic field, the upper part of your body. So it's clearing your upper head energies. If you've been doing your head in, working too hard, concentrating too much. And then gradually just let the arms swing forwards and backwards. And then step your feet out and just sway from side to side. And the thought for the day, which is quite appropriate really, is that things change, nothing stays the same. So we saw that yesterday with brilliant sunshine and then just literally overnight it's gone to this. Presuming that it's all the same with you, it's pouring with rain. Um, and just again, we move from winter into spring. Um, the elements change in the Chinese calendar. We start to come into the wood element from the wintry elements. And in Ayurveda medicine, um, again, everything changes. The doshas start to shift. So everything's beginning to change. And come to stillness. Lift and roll the shoulders once more. Bring your hands to your heart. And then however you want to, come to roll down to lie on your back. Which was where I had intended to start the class. And coming to, um, just for a moment, Shavasana, lying on your back, and while you're here, start to roll your ankles, circle your ankles in one direction, and you can keep your elbows on the ground, Lift your hands and start to circle your wrists as well as circling your ankles. And then circle your ankles and your wrists in the opposite direction. So this is beginning to warm up the circulation and actually also to boost your immune system. Particularly on a day like today where you might not get out quite so much, it's really useful to boost everything up and get the circulation flowing. And 
and then just release and relax. And then raise both arms above your head, join thumbs, and extend one heel, your right heel, and relax it, and then extend your left heel, and relax. Right heel extend. So you're pushing your right heel away from you. You almost go into a slight curve, and then the other heel extends away from you. So you're just stretching out your body. Come to the center, and then breathing out, lower your arms back down alongside you. And now bend both knees so that both feet are on the floor and hip width apart. And just do a couple of pelvic tilts where you flatten your back to the ground, your lower back, as if you're going to lift your bottom, but you don't quite, um, what well you can do, but, and then you just release so that there's a little gap underneath your lower back. So flattening and releasing. And then stay where you are, clasp your hands behind your head to support both the back of your head and your neck will automatically be supported. Elbows out to the side. And breathing out, just lift your head and neck, curling up a little bit or a lot towards your knees. I'm only going for a few inches really. And then breathing out, just lowering your head back down to the ground. And once more, when you next breathe out, roll up slightly, you just feel that your tummy, or lower, your abdominal muscles are engaging. You can help this by just engaging your perineum too, so that your muscles at the lower abdominal level are engaged to support the uplifting movement. And again, breathing out, lifting up, and then just replace your head back down to the ground. Keep your left hand underneath your head and bend your right knee up with holding it with the right hand. And this time, breathing out, lift your head up and aim your left elbow towards your right knee. I hope that makes sense. And then just release back down again. Your right knee is hugged into your chest, hold held with the right hand. And breathing out, you lift your head up and Turn sideways as your left elbow is aiming towards your right knee. And then just release back down again. And one last time, breathing out as you lift up and turn and then release. Let your right leg go back down to the floor and swap hands. So this time your right hand holds your head, supports your head. And this time bend your left knee, holding your left knee with your left hand. And when you next breathe out, breathe out, lifting your head up, and aim your right elbow towards your left knee. And then release back down to the ground. Once more, breathing out, lifting, raising your right elbow towards the left knee. And then one last time. and then release back down again. Release the hand from under the head and place the left foot on the ground. Hands can rest on the abdomen or they can rest palms down on the floor and you might like your feet slightly wider than hip width apart. Feel free to experiment as you let both knees drift to the right and your head turns to the left and your left hip lifts from the ground. Take an in and a out breath here. Tummy in, perineum engages slightly to bring your knees up to centre and then let both knees drift over to the left and your head can turn to look right, either looking up or looking further right along the floor, keeping your eyes open or closed. Breathing in, bring your feet back, knees back to centre and then just gently sway from side to side.
Your knees drift one direction and your head goes in the other direction. Bring your knees back to centre. Perhaps bring your feet back to hip width apart if you've made them wider. And stretch your left leg along the ground. Bend your right knee so that you're in lying tree. And just take a couple of breaths here. So this opens you out at the groin level. So part, this is part of your, your lymph node. You've got a proliferation of lymph nodes here. You've got them everywhere, of course, but you have got a big proliferation here. But also you're opening up your right hip. Now bring your right knee upright so as the right foot's on the floor. Move your right foot out towards the edge of the mat and bring your right knee towards the midline of your body, towards the left, in other words, and your right side of your right foot tilts up away from you, so it's like an evert, invert action. You can lift your right hip off the ground. I hope that makes sense. So I'm always lifting my hip off the ground. I'm pressing my big toe into the ground on the inside of my right foot, and my left, my outside of my right foot is lifting up towards the right, and then bringing myself back to lying on the floor stretching the right leg along the ground and sliding the left leg up, lying tree, so the left sole of the foot points towards the inside of the right leg and the left knee is out to the side. So again, this is opening you up at the groin level. And just taking you in and out breath. And then bring your left knee upright, your left foot on the ground. Walk your left foot slightly out to the left so that the left knee has space to drop to the midline towards the right. And you can roll as your left hip lifts up off the ground. And again, your big toe will be pressing into the ground and your left sole of your foot almost will be um, facing out towards the left. It's exploring a group of muscles that can lose their movement um, as often that just not get moved, but as we get older, this becomes more uh, relevant. And um, this forms part of the somatic exercises for health, um, and they're very linked. Just bring your roll back and then hug one knee into the chest and the other, so you're hugging both knees into the chest and rocking from side to side. So these somatic exercises are very similar and aligned to the Alexander technique and they're also aligned to the Feldenkrais technique um, and they're part of um, the anti-aging uh, movement. I don't know if you saw in the paper yesterday, not that you can believe the paper completely, but um, it says that something like yoga stretching is far more efficient at lowering blood pressure than walking. And the reason is because it stretches you and the stretching gives flexibility to everything inside. So all the, uh, everything really, the veins, the, 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 the blood flow, um, the, the, yes, the, the veins of the, where the blood is carried. So the, it stretches and that stretch is more efficient, apparently. But of course, I would say that because I'm passionate about the yoga, but I just thought it was quite interesting. And then hugging your knees into your chest, still holding them, let them travel away to arm's length. Hug your knees into your chest and let them travel away to arm's length. And hug your knees into your chest and let them travel away to arm's length. So you're massaging up and down the very, um, the L4, L5, lower part of the back as you carry on doing this. So you're almost like massaging, self-massaging across the base of your, along the base of your spine. And this is deeply soothing to something called the Apana energy, which is a lower foundational of the five energies in the body. And starting with the foundational energy is the best thing that you can do, and particularly at the change of seasons, because you've got Ayurveda 
in the Ayurvedic world, we're changing, um, and the um, vata dosha is associated with movement and pain. And there's often stiffness at the joints as we change seasons. I don't know why that should be so, but it's like the body's adjusting to different different elements coming into play. And it's the end of the winter, of course, so. And then very gently, just finish hugging your knees into your chest. And we're going to come to however works for you, either rolling to the right or ro rocking up. We're going to be coming to our knees in tabletop. As we do a couple of cat cows. So again, we're moving the spine. So hands shoulder width apart, knees hip width apart, and just classic dipping your back, eye looking up or along the mat, and breathing out rounding chin to chest. Dipping your back, looking up, and breathing out rounding chin to chest. And now this time, as you're still doing that movement of dipping your back and looking up, just bring your um, bottom towards the left and your head goes towards the right. Come back to the centre and just then move your bottom to the right as your head goes to the left a couple of times. Come back to the centre. Your hips move slightly to the left and you turn your head slightly to the right. Come to the centre and your hips go to the right and your head slightly goes to the left. And if you do that a couple of times, imagine that you're a fish, or you're looking down on top of a fish. And as it swims, it oscillates its body a little bit like this, but it's very adept at doing it. And again, you're starting to engage muscles that we can sometimes miss out. So it comes to that stretch all the way along one side and then the other side. And then come back to the centre and again a couple of classic cat cows dipping your back, looking up or along the mat and rounding your back chin to chest. And again dipping your back and then rounding. And as you round this time, tuck your toes, tummy in, perineum engages. You might want to bring your hands back slightly as we come into a very soft downward dog. Bottom up to the ceiling, away from you, so that you lengthen your back, and then you can begin to straighten your legs, and then walk one foot, one bend one knee, and then the other, so you're walking the dog. The inside of your elbows are just slightly aimed to one another, which brings your shoulders in alignment. Anyone who's hypermobile, not that I'm not, not sure any of us are, but um, it's very important to align properly. And then very gently, Walk one foot and then the other towards your hands. You can bring your hands back towards your feet. Just pause here in a forward bend, perhaps touching your fingers either to the floor or resting your hands on your shins to come to a flat back, lengthen along the spine. And then breathing out, soften your knees, press your feet down into the ground, and then rolling up, vertebra by vertebra to standing. And once you're standing, lift and roll your shoulders. And then step your left foot forward, back right foot out 45 degrees. If you feel you're wobbling, always move your left foot out to the side. And just place your hands on your waist. Feel that you can adjust your feet and just bend your front left knee Drop your weight centrally and lift your chest. You're just looking at the moment ahead. And just stay here for a couple of in and out breaths. And then you can come to cactus arm as an option, opening your arms out to the side, which is opening your shoulders, part of the lung meridians here. And if you want to come to full warrior, raise your hands up. 
so your hands can be up, you naturally tend to aim the palms together. We're looking ahead still. If you feel that your balance is good, you can look upwards, but careful with your neck. Otherwise, just look forward. And in Warrior One, you have the option of lifting your back heel off the ground to give you a greater um, possibility to turn your hips to face forward. I don't like that option because I wobble too much, but a lot of people do. And then breathing out, lower your hands back down alongside you and step your left foot back towards your right. Lift and roll your shoulders. And then stepping your right foot forward, again, find your adjustment. It could be out towards the edge of the mat. Your left foot goes to a 45 degree. Just lift and roll your shoulders and place your hands on your waist. Just feel the lifting of the chest, which is classified as a back bend, um, which is uplifting for the mood, which is very helpful on a day like today. Soften your front right knee and drop your weight centrally and feel that you can adjust your uh, feet. I'm quite tall, so I perhaps need a bigger gap to be able to drop my weight centrally. Make sure that your right front leg that's bending is not coming inwards, so you're supporting your weight. Then the option is to bring your hands to cactus hands. Looking ahead, you can always lift your back heel. And then hands up, palms facing inwards towards each other, either looking ahead or if you can, with care, look upwards, making sure your head's not dropping back. The option is yours. You'll feel a stretch in the front as you're just lengthening all the way through the front of the body. And then breathing out, gently lower your hands and step your right foot towards the back. Just come to standing normally and then lift and roll your shoulders. Come to step out. The classic yogic instruction is to step or jump three feet out. Well, three feet is massive. It's like, ugh. Um, but anyway, just uh, whatever um, works for you. Just lift and roll your shoulders. Hands out to the side so that you're in a star shape. And then bring your hands down to your waist for the moment. Feel that you can adjust your feet inwards if you need to, that your feet are facing forwards, and then soften your knees and come forward, bringing your hands to the ground. Feel that you can adjust your feet outwards or inwards. Once your hands are on the ground, classically and technically, your fingertips should be level with your uh, tops of your toes. But um, that is just a guideline. And then sway from side to side. Let your head relax. Try not to keep tension in the back of the neck. Bend one knee and bend the other as you go from side to side. And then take your left hand to your right shin or ankle and your right hand on your waist. Hold on to your right leg with your left hand to support you as you turn your head to look upwards and open your right shoulder. Just take an in and an out breath. If you want to, you can raise your right hand and then breathing out. Bring your right hand back to the waist. Come back to having both hands on the ground. Just bend as you sway from side to side. And then walk your hands over to the left. Your right hand holds your left shin or ankle. Your left hand goes on your waist and you turn using the um, hold of your right hand against your left leg. The knees can be bent still and turn to look over and to the left. Your chin tucks in, you can look upwards. And you've got the option to raise your left hand either straight up or just in Gyan Mudra, thumb to the second finger and the other three fingers upwards. And then coming back, hands on the ground, as you just sway from side to side again. And then just walk your hands forward so that your bottom is back. It's like a wide-legged um, downward dog. 
you can walk your hands forward a little bit or a lot. Again, you can keep a bend in your knees, support your lower back. Take an in and out breath here. You should feel a nice stretch along your lower back. And then very, very gently walk your hands back. Heel toe your feet in. So big toes go inwards and heels go out. Heels come inwards and the toes go out. And just heel toe your feet in sufficiently that you feel that they're nicely balanced, hip width apart or a bit wider. Then bend your knees, press your uh, feet into the ground and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And when you're up there, lift and roll your shoulders. Thumbs together, raise your palms and just swaying palm. This emphasises the bottom movement, which is very much implicated in any pain or stiffness. So this, this disperses that stuck energy in the Ayurvedic uh, side of movement. And then releasing your hands, lift and roll your shoulders. So this one, you're going to be much better for me. I'm going to hold on, so my balance is never that great. So I'm standing on my right leg, holding my left ankle, and just bringing my left heel just slightly behind, stretching out the front of my left leg. If you want to make it even more elegant, it's a variation on dancer's pose. The full dancer is, which I've instantly lost balance, the full dancer is to raise the right hand and come forward slightly. So I'm sure you're much better than me. <laughs> and then the other uh, one is to stand on your left leg, hold your right ankle, just bring your heel, just stretch the top of the leg back, the right leg back. And again, if you want to um, come into more elegant dancer's pose, lift your left arm. So you can always hold on. And then just release the foot. And come to um, raise your hands up, plus reverse your palms and lift your heels. So we're getting in a balance. It's hard to think of much else when you're balancing and then releasing your heels back down to the ground and come for a moment to lie on your tummy in um, sphinx pose so elbows on the ground look downwards adjust your elbows that you're comfortable and then press your elbows into the ground and just pull yourself a millimetre forwards and then release. When you pull yourself forward, you stretch out your tummy and then you can just bounce the backs of your toe, feet on the ground. Just pat them, that activates, I think that activates, doesn't it, to the lymph um, uh, on the in reflexology on, on the feet. And then just gently wobble, wobbling, wobbling your bottom from side to side. And then slide your hands back, elbows in to come to, we're going to come onto kneeling and then into um, a child's pose. So knees apart, big toes together, and either stretch your arms forward. Your bottom doesn't have to come right down, particularly if you've got knee issues. It can be up still. Or if you want to be classic child, then you would slide your hands and have them palms upwards behind you. This gives your body a chance to start to breathe into, when I say the back, it rounds the back slightly and so the breath 
has access to, I suppose, a different space. You're not crushing, you are compressing it in your front, although you shouldn't be. You should be lengthening your spine so that everything is extended. But it's just a slightly different focus. But also, coming forward, if ever you have a headache, and resting your forehead on a bolster like this, and just pressing on your forehead, is helpful. It's calming any forward bend is calming to the nervous system. But sometimes coming forward is too much, so you, a variation is to have your hands making fists if you have got a bolster, and resting your forehead on your fists, which brings you up slightly higher. Very restful for the heart because your heart then is parallel to the ground, like animals. And the heart hasn't got quite so much work to do to pump up to the head because we're normally upright, of course. And very gently, just again, even here, engage your tummy or your lower abdomen. We're going to come to a seat position. with the legs outwards this time, in a V. Take the time to just lift any flesh out from under your bottom. Extend your um, toes upwards. Just bounce your legs. Either rub your legs, like dry skin brushing or pat your legs, whatever your preference is, tops of your feet. You don't have to confine it to your legs. You can pat your arms, you can pat your chest, you can pat your side, your lower back. It just again sets up a vibration and that vibration is anti-stagnation. It uh, keeps things moving, just a combination of sliding your hands, dry skin rubbing, even with your clothes on patting, it just gets the circulation boosting up. The tapping on the ribs, the intercostal muscles, looking very inelegant, but actually uh, relaxes the muscles, the intercostal muscles. And if you do this to somebody for a few minutes, you'll find that their lung capacity increases, which was something that I've done in yoga uh, practice. Um, so that you can do salute from the sun, instead of taking a breath per movement, you can do the entire salute to the sun on one breath. It really is quite surprising. And I believe that parents with children who've got cystic fibrosis tap their children's backs of their um, ribs to, and around the side to loosen um, the intercostal muscles and increase lung capacity. But then just come to touch your hands either side of your view to lengthen your spine, tummy in, and then slide your hands down both legs, coming forward. You, there's no emphasis on coming very far forward, it's just where your hands comfortably fall. So it can be your hands come to your shins or your ankles, but it just depends on your arm length. Um, or you can hold your big toes. Have a sense of lengthening as you breathe in along your spine and then have a sense of just relaxing forward. So again, your chin slightly comes in towards your chest here and that activates some people the vagus nerve, which is very in in yoga circles at the moment, but it very much focuses, the vagus nerve has many functions, but anti-inflammatory is one of them. So this is, again, re it reinforces the calming aspect of a forward bend. It's easy to let your toes relax, so if they have, just a reminder to keep your heels extended, and you'll feel the inside of your legs slightly engaging. You need muscles on either side of your legs to fully support you in your standing to dance in the pose. And then just very gently slide your hands up and come to a gentle cross.
cross-legged position. If it's not comfortable for you to have your legs crossed, then fine, just keep your legs out. And sitting up, just bring your left hand to your right knee, right hand behind you, lengthen as you breathe in, and breathe out, turn to look over your right shoulder. Tummy in, press your back right hand down to lengthen you, and then come back to the center. Lengthen your body again, holding your both knees, and then bring your right hand to your left knee, left hand behind you, fingers on the floor, or palm, depending on your arm capacity. Lengthen as you breathe, and breathe out, turning towards the left. Tummy in to support you as you lengthen up and come back to the centre. And then just rest your hands either on your, around your knees or you can bring your hands into your inner thighs, elbows bent as you just take a nod, lengthening forward. Tummy in as you lengthen along your spine, it's just counteracting and counterposing the previous rotation that we've done. Just gently coming forward, you might feel this on your outer thighs and your bottom almost. And then breathing in, sitting up. Rest your hands on your knees, either palms down, thumb, um, second finger goes within the touches the thumb. So palms down or up according to how you feel. And then breathing in, turn your head to the left. Breathing out, turn your head to the right. In to the left, out to the right, in to the left, and out to the right. Bring your head to centre, and this time turn your palms up. Open the fingers of your left hand as you breathe in. Your head is central. As you breathe out, just bring the tips of the fingers together as you close your left hand, representing a flower, a lotus flower in yoga tradition. Breathing in, open the right hand, and breathing out, bring and close your fingers together, closing your right hand, your thumb comes to your fingertips. Breathing in, open your left fingers. Breathing out, close your left fingers, or your left flower. Breathing in, open your right fingers. Breathing out, close your right fingers. And just a few breaths in your own time as you breathing in, open the left hand. Close and then go to the right. And then finish your breath, bring your chin slightly to your chest. Bring both hands to the heart centre. And have a lovely day ahead and thank you very much for joining me today.